Hey kids, Christine here, and I'm ready to share with you my Sparkbird Mod Podge mix. This is my own little formula for DIY Mod Podge, and I have to tell you, I'm really enchanted by it. I used it to make, to do some of these products, projects, um, because I wanted to compare it, the homemade version, with the store version, and the various finishes that the store version comes in. So I did that, and I was absolutely um, blown away by how this performed. I was so pleased with it that I actually went over and recoded some things that were done in the regular I recoded with this. So this is the recipe for that, but it's important for me to share with you too that there's another video that you should watch um, where I talk about how each of these, these two, performed on the same artwork in different applications. Because it's important for you to know, I always want to be upfront with, hey, this is how it works, and this is great, it may not be perfect, you need to decide for yourself if it's right for you, but I'm telling you, it's worth trying. Um, so my formulation is a little different than what I found online because I felt like none of the things I found really hit the mark in terms of how I use Mod Podge um, like in applications like this. You're going to need to figure that out for yourself, but if you do try it, please let me know what you think, how it works, um, what you used it on, how you might improve it, um, or if it was just the cat's whiskers. So let's have a look. So I did some poking around online and I found a couple of different ways to do it. A lot of people just use water and glue, but somehow I don't think that's really going to be enough for me. So I am going to use glue, and this is just school glue, and some water, but I'm also going to add to it um, this polycrylic uh, top coat, a clear coat top coat. And this was a little spendy, it was like $14, but I have other uses for it, so that's fine. And also it will allow me to make buckets of Mod Podge in the future, should I want to. Um, so it's really simple, it's add some glue to a jar. So you'll need a jar, this jar is bigger than I need because I'm only making a small amount. I'm just going to put all the glue into it and I want to get as much of the glue out as I can. So I'm just going to kind of let it sit here for a second. It'll fall into the jar if I let go, so this may take a minute. Okay, I think that's well enough. So I grabbed some stirs because we'll want those and also a different measuring cup because I'm only using four ounces of glue, um, not eight ounces like a lot of people were doing online. So I have a full half cup of water here and I only need a quarter cup. Oops, yep, I knew that was gonna happen. This is the story of my life, people. All right, let's wipe that up. Okay, stay with me. All right, so. What we're going to do is simply add water to the glue. Now again, I don't feel like Mod Podge is just water and glue, but we're going to start there. And I'm going to start with half of my water, not dumping the whole amount in at once because I feel like half, uh, the ratio is two glue to one water, which in my case would be four ounces of glue, two ounces of water. But when I look at Mod Podge, it's not as thin as that. So I'm going to kind of hedge the water a little until I stir more. All right, so then here, this I'm sort of just guessing at too, because I've changed my um, amounts from what I saw online. Different, you know, I'm, I'm making a different amount, but also, um, nobody seemed very certain for how this, how much of this stuff to use. So I'm going to sort of make it myself. Okay, I'll use a teaspoon. I am going to stir it first to make sure that it's, you know, all of its little chemical goodness is suspended correctly because I can feel the bottom does feel a little gooier maybe than the stuff floating here at the top. So let me stir. The can says do not shake. Of course that was after I already shook it, but it's gonna be fine. It's been sitting for a while now. Okay, so I think we're good here. And now I'm going to start with two teaspoons. <laughs> 
two teaspoons of this. Now this I do want to get off here because it, it's a sealer. It's like a, a little varnish. Let's make that go away. I'm so glad you're here with me and I'm just, you're just seeing the real me today. It's a Monday morning and it's like all bets are off. Oh God. Okay. See, see that? There's more. And I don't want it on my already abused mat. So now I'm going to mix this up. It's two teaspoons, four ounces of glue, and about two ounces of water. And this looks to me like, like Mod Podge. Like when I think about Mod Podge, I'm not going to add the, the full thing of water. And we're just going to give it a go. If it messes up, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I really think... This feels closer to Mod Podge. So I am going to add one more teaspoon. Why not? So that's where the gloss is going to come from mainly because it's a gloss acrylic sealer. So I am just going to leave that here and we're going to see how this works. So I'm going to continue stirring it. Now I don't think I, I don't have to wait for it. I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to move this away, put a lid on it, grab some tape here, and a pen. I haven't used this pen in a while. Watch it not work. There, Mod Podge gloss, just so I know. Exactly. I might do DIY here, just so I know that I made this. So now we're gonna use that in the next project and we will report back, or you'll see how well it works. Well, as you already know, I think it works great. And I really hope that you'll give it a try and mix up your own batch and let me know what you think. Um, I've used it on several different projects now and I'm very smitten with it. So again, I may play around with more formulas, but this one is a go-to better than Mod Podge in my opinion if, if this is the kind of finish you want. So it's smooth but hard and has a, a sheen but it's not glossy. So it's all good. And now here's the recipe.